scrape, which is the product of Adam. And, uh, and he told me that, it, that the security features that were there were originally put in place to keep the operator from playing Pong on the, on the operator workspace. Uh, so so these, this is a product that evolved from uh, Microsoft DOS data back in the 80s, using a lot of the same code. So, so the, Wes, are you saying that Pong is more of a threat than the Internet Explorer? No. <laughs> Uh, so, so there's some difficulty here in, in having the HMI systems protect themselves. So, uh, so, so if the HMI system is advertising that has some security functionality, then it has to protect itself in some way. So, uh, the idea is the way this happened originally, in, uh, if you had DOS HMI packages, if you had your hardware level, you had your very thin layer of operating system. Single user, single tasking. And the HMI itself would handle everything as far as users and authentication and access control and things like that. Uh, if you're the only thing running on the system, you don't have a whole lot to worry about as long as you can keep somebody captive in there. As long as you don't allow anybody to run any extra code or anything like that. Uh, as long as you can kind of take your boot up process and things like that. Uh, as long as you're the only thing running, you don't have to worry about anything undermining your homegrown security. And so you implement a lot of your own security controls because DOS really didn't, uh, didn't do that sort of thing for you. Uh, and so if you can manage to keep something as a, as a, as a straight up kiosk, then you're pretty good with that. But now you've got multi-user, multi-tasking operating systems are the default. Uh, most of these packages run on Windows XP uh, and above, 2000 NT. Uh, pretty much everything you can see on it is going to be running multi-user and multi-task. But the HMI systems are still implementing their own user authentication and their own access control. So you've got a problem here. Uh, as you know, if you have multi-users and multi-tasking, you've got several different users, several different processes. And uh, the idea with this sort of thing is that the operating system and the chipset and everything tries to uh, help you out with uh, preventing one user's process from monkey another user's process, uh, but there's nothing to keep one user's process from messing with another user's process. If you're running a program as a user and you fire up a debugger, you can attach to it. Uh, you can mess around with its files uh, as long as all the ownership uh, things are straight. So, uh, so the problem with that is, is if you have your HMI running as the user is currently logged in, you better be protecting them from bouncing out of that interface because if they can ever get out of it or if they can ever find some other way of running code, USB, Firewire, anything like that, then it's over because you have not only got access to all the files that are uh, associated with that HMI, but you can also monkey around with the software. So, uh, so now that brings us to Bob. Uh, the 1995 attempt by Microsoft at a user-friendly, capital kiosk-style interface with lots of physical analogies. So with an HMI, we might have a uh, physical switch or, or digital representations of switches and gauges and things like that. Things that kind of are reminiscent of, of the uh, switches and gauges on a physical control panel. With Bob, we have different rooms that we move between uh, and different other physical analogies to writing an email with a letter or in a pen and paper and things like that. Uh, does anybody remember this? Anybody ever use this? Okay, yeah, so, so cool. I'm sorry. Um, it, you, you can track this software down. Uh, and it's pretty funny. Uh, and it does run on modern operating systems. Uh, and it is universally hated. Uh, nobody likes this. So if you go back, uh, we've got two screenshots here. And, and, and uh, bring it from the past to the future here. I found a post from the Usenet in 1995 based on the handy Microsoft Bob. Uh, this person's family works at a software store. It says, we have a 100% return rate on Microsoft Bob. The customer who bought it came in in an agitated mood. I don't know if he came in agitated before he bought it or, or after. The manuals of Bob is nothing more than a cheap advertising report. No question, I don't know what he was uh, Bob needs 80 megs of RAM just to run. Wow. Bob needs 32 meg of hard drive to install. Oh, man. And then the latest software takes up another 9 megs. This is a big deal. Uh, now, uh, uh, to, to relate internet rage to the modern day, we have a post.
interface is important here uh, regarding Windows 8's Metro interface. Uh, it's saying that it's like running the Media Center and an iPhone at the same time, except it's on a computer, not streaming to the TV, and I can't call Siri uh, something that I blanked out for amusement. It was so offensive that even I blanked. <laughs> Why does this OS think that it's a cell phone? It makes the internet race. So, so, so people are hating on new interfaces. That's, that's nothing new. On the security side of things, though, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like an HMI software. Uh, and it also has some of the same kinds of vulnerabilities. So uh, Gary McGraw's book, Software Security, he has a little sidebar thing here where he talks about a design flaw in Microsoft Office. And he, 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 he didn't verify it. But he says it's all for me, it may be apocryphal. Uh, and essentially the idea is that in Microsoft Bob, if you got your password wrong three times, 